Greetings, I'm Wesley Hahn, agronomist of Tigersaw Products. I want to thank you for joining us for this brief video discussing the importance of sulfur in corn production. Any of you have heard about the uh, Clean Air Act of the 1990s? Uh, no more acid rain. Acid rain not, was not all that bad as uh, some of the publicity had it uh, trademarked as, uh, as it did provide uh, sulfur for our crop production. Now we have the ultra low sulfur diesel from our uh, use in uh, highway vehicles. Therefore, we have less uh, sulfate going into the atmosphere. And with that, uh, we have to continue to look at ways to enhance our crop production by adding sulfur. About 15 years ago, or maybe even further back, we started seeing sulfur deficiencies in corn. Uh, in the Midwest, as well as Canada, and all the way down into the Mississippi Delta. So how much sulfur do we need? You know, there's no standardized soil test for sulfur. Uh, tissue analysis is the standard, and uh, we consider that mainly a snapshot in time because of the variability of, of sulfate in the soil and the uptake rates. So a good way to assess your needs for sulfur is to conduct strip trials uh, with and without sulfur across multiple years and multiple fields is a good way to confirm, do you have sulfur fertilization requirements? And looking at some soil test results, and these data is average of two commercial soil testing labs in o Indiana and Ohio. And uh, these represent samples from the states of Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, New York, and Wisconsin. And the majority of these states actually border the lakes, uh, which is just south of uh, Ontario. And all those samples from these two labs, 82% were sulfur deficient. Of that 82%, 45% were below the critical level. And the remaining 46% were between critical level and the optimum level. So therefore, a need exists for the use of sulfur in our corn production practices. Yes, we understand that soil testing is not the most uh, predictable method to determine uh, the sulfur needs by crop, but it's certainly an indication that the trend exists for the potential deficiency in sulfur. And the reason we it's difficult to use soil testing is there's no standardized test. There's about four different extraction methods labs can use, and none of those are correlated back to a predictable yield response. So here again, uh, that's the reason I mentioned earlier that we suggest doing soil testing in addition to plant tissue testing to assess uh, total sulfur needs. For example, in Iowa, there was more than 150 trials that were conducted with corn in addition to alfalfa and soybeans. And of those, about approximately 50% were statistically significantly different in a, with yield increase with the application of sulfur. So here again, sulfur has become known as the fourth major nutrient that we need to consider in our crop production needs. So let's take a look at uh, our sulfur requirements. I mean, normally with our phosphorus and potassium fertilization requirements, we generally talk about replacing those nutrients based upon crop removal. In other words, what's taken off by that crop at the time of harvest? Well, don't forget, you know, sulfate and nitrates react very similarly in the soil. Therefore, there's a need to look at those two nutrients, nitrogen and sulfur, based upon crop demand or crop requirements. So hence, I have in this uh, uh, slide uptake versus crop removal. Crop uptake is the amount of nutrients that crop's going to take up during the growing season to help it manifest its yield potential. Crop removal is the amount of nutrients that's removed when we harvest that crop. So if we look at corn in particular, 
we have 29 pounds of sulfate required to produce 160 bushels of corn. Compared to removal, when we harvest that corn in the grain, we're removing 13 pounds of uh, sulfate. Therefore, let's take a look. If we replace the sulfur based upon removal, will we have enough for the next year for a crop requiring 29 pounds of sulfate? Well, maybe, maybe not. You know, oftentimes we take credit for uh, organic matter breakdown, natural mineralization taking place in the soil will produce or release some sulfate. But the problem with that is it's very unpredictable. Therefore, we suggest you utilize the uptake amount on a given crop to replace the sulfur rather than using the removal value. Now, if you'd rather use specific numbers instead of trying to use a chart, here are some uh, values by crop. This is the amount of sulfur uptake by harvested unit. Canola, for example, requires a half a pound of sulfur per bushel harvested. Wheat is 0.24 pounds of sulfate per bushel. Corn is 0.18 pounds of sulfur per bushel. Soybeans is 0.36 pounds of sulfur per bushel. Alfalfa is seven pounds of sulfur per ton of harvested crop. So therefore, if you're talking with a customer and he wants to say, okay, I want 200 bushels corn, then you take uh, the 0.18 times 200, it's going to give you what, 36 pounds of sulfur required to produce that 200 bushels. Okay, so here again, some values you can keep in mind to quickly convert uh, sulfur needs based on a specific crop. So here's a quick video I'd like for you to uh, to view uh, as I'm in the field evaluating the sulfur deficiency. Greetings, I'm Wesley Hahn, agronomist with Tiger Saw Products. I'm in a cornfield today assessing a, what I suspect is sulfur deficiency. And the way we actually observe that uh, is notice that the plant has a yellow discoloration in the whirl of the plant. Here again, sulfur is not mobile within the plant. So once that plant takes up the sulfur, it goes to the younger leaves, which happens to be the whirl of the corn. Also, with the deficiency, there's a shortening of the, shortening of the internodes of the corn plant. When we compare these deficient plants with a more healthy plant that I've collected from another part of the field, notice the whorl is a much darker green as compared to these plants. And also when you look at the internodes, that's the spacing between the leaves, is it's a wider spacing than it is if you compare the internodes on these uh, deficient plants. We always recommend, if you suspect sulfur deficiency, collect plant tissue samples, send them to the lab, have them, have them analyzed so we confirm that is a true deficiency. So with that, if you have further questions, I encourage you to contact your account manager or contact me directly through our website at tigersaw.com. And then looking at uh, cord response to, to uh, Tiger XP uh, in the control, uh, we had 209 bushel average, whereas in XP we have 213 bushel average. This is average of 68 trials now over three years in four states in the U.S. So with that, we can say, you know, with this number of trials, we can average, you know, this four bushel yield advantage by adding our product. Now, another often asked question is, what's my return? You know, full bushel to the acre yield advantage. We got Tiger XP applied at 35 pounds per acre times uh, 44 cents a pound for the, the product. And this is an estimated cost because it can vary from location to location. When we multiply that, we get $15.40 an acre for the product. Okay, with a four bushel yield advantage, 
at $5.55 a bushel for the corn. This is based upon new crop corn delivered in November of 2021. Both of these values now came from a Canadian uh, crop report. So we take the $4, excuse me, the four bushel times the $5.55 and have a $22.20 per acre gross income. We subtract the product cost of $15.40, have an ROI of $6.80. That's a nice return on the investment of just adding a product that you're already adding other fertilizers to the crop to obtain a nice crop response as well as a enhancing the banking count as well. So hopefully this has provided some input that you can utilize in your uh, uh, work with your accounts. So with that, I thank you and have a good day.